Okay, now that we know about uh, column space and the null space, we're going to take a look at two two more spaces. Um, and these deal essentially with the same thing, but for the transpose of the matrix. So let's find ourselves a matrix. Let me write out a matrix here. Okay, so there's a matrix for us. And if I wanted to multiply this by another matrix, it would have to have three columns because multiplication of this row by a column here means multiplying the first component and the first component, first component of this row by the first component of this column, second component and the third component, right? So I'm going to make this a column matrix, a vector, and I've, con I've composed this in such a way that I know this multiplication is possible because here I have a two by three matrix and here I have a three by one matrix so the multiplication will be possible and the result will be a two by one matrix. Let's go ahead and work out what that matrix is, uh, what the answer is here. It's going to be negative one, sorry, it's going to be one x1 minus x2 plus two x3. And my second column is going to be negative 2x1 plus 3x2 minus 3x3. And that's really all matrix multiplication is, right? We, we, we're sort of hashing over really old stuff at this point, but I just I think it's important to remember where we're really coming from. If I write this multiplication this way instead, if I said, for example, this is 1, negative 2, times x1 plus negative 1, 3 times x2 plus 2, negative 3 times x3, then I might even do this. I might say that's my first vector a, first column vector a, x1 plus column vector a2 times x2 plus column vector a3 times x3. So there are multiple ways to write this, but if we think of these, um, think of this, the product of these two matrices in this way, then what we described here is the column space of A. That's what we've done here. So that's a quick reminder about what the column space of A is. If I take that column space, if I take the matrix A, and multiply it by the vector x, which I can write in this form, or I can write in this form, or I can write in this form. If I do that and set it equal to the zero vector, and then go about finding the solution or solutions to this equation, I have what's called in whatever the solutions are here, I have what's called a null space. So let's do that really quickly. In order to, to solve this matrix equation, I need to set up this augmented matrix. Remember that solving, if this had an equal zero next to it, which currently it doesn't because I've designated it as the column space. Now it's not the column space, it's the null space. Um, but if I were, if I'm trying to solve this matrix equation, then I'm trying to solve this matrix equation, which means I'm trying to solve this system of equations. Okay, and the way we do that from way back is to say that, or it's to set up an augmented matrix, and that's what I've done here. So I need to set up this augmented matrix and then row reduce it, and the result will be the solution uh, to this system. So I'll do that off camera. And once I have that uh, result, I need to interpret it. I get x1 plus x3 equals 0, and x2 plus x3 equals 0. x3 is common to both of these, so I'll solve this one for x1 and this one for x2. That just gives me x1 equals negative x3. And this one gives me x2 equals negative x3. So my solutions 
x1, x2, x3, will all look like this. Pick a value for x3, and then your x1 and x2 values will just be the opposite of that. And if I think of this as a collection of all vectors, here's one vector in that space. Right, I've chosen negative 1 for x3. x1 and x2 are the opposite of that. All the vectors in that space make up what we call the null space. Okay. So that's a quick overview of column space and null space. And, and what we need to do now is talk about row space and the left null space. And I'll start with row space. If the column space is, um, notice that I've got this matrix equation written this way down here. Each one of these is a column in my matrix multiplied by a variable. If I want to talk about row space, then I'm essentially saying uh, that I want 1, negative 1, 2, that row times a variable, and negative 2, 3, negative 3 times another variable. And one way to do that is to sort of flip this on its head and, and work not with A, but with A transpose. So A transpose is did you wonder why we were ever going to use that stuff? Well, here it is. 1, negative 1, 2, uh, negative 2, 3, negative 3 as columns instead of as vectors. And whereas here I had a 2 by 3 matrix, now I have a 3 by 2 matrix. Right? So if I, let's, let's write that under here, 3 by 2. So if I hope to do any matrix multiplication, then this has to be a 2 by something matrix. And I'm going to make it a 2 by 1 because I want to do the same kind of thing as I've been doing before. And this is essentially the same thing as we did up here now, but on the transpose of A. Here I'm going to have 1 times negative 2 times x1. Sorry, 1 times x1 plus negative 2 times x2, and so on. Matrix multiplication. So now what I want to do is find the column space of this matrix, and that's going to be what we call the row space of the original matrix. So I can write that row, the row space of A is equal to the column space of A transpose. And that's all there is to that, right? I could go on and on about, you know, how to find this now, but we know how to find this. We know how to find the column space of a, of a matrix. If I want to find the row space of the matrix, then just take its transpose first and then go back to computing uh, or finding the column space. If I want to find a basis for the row space of A, then I just need to find a basis for the column space of A transpose. And as it happens, let me highlight this so we, we have it to come back to. And that's kind of my, my main result so far. Um, the other thing is that what we call the left row space is just the row, sorry, the left null space The left null space is just the null space of A transpose. So it's, it's got kind of a fancy name, but it, it's exactly the same thing. Um, so that's sorry, it's my other major result for this this video. This is this is the other thing I wanted to be able to to talk about. So now, if I give you a matrix A say given A, given a matrix A, I can't write today for some reason, given a matrix A, you should be able to find the column space of A, the row space of A, the null space of A, and the left null space of A, which is usually just uh, denoted the null of A transpose. But notice that this is also the column space of A transpose, right? So if I take my highlighter now and highlight each one of these in its own color, the column space of A, the row space of A, which is the column space of A transpose, the null space of A, and the left null space. 